To understand the incredible growth New York City has seen over the past few decades, all you have to do is look at the L train. Each weekday, 400,000 riders use the L, which travels through the Canarsie Tunnel under the East River, connecting Manhattan and Brooklyn. At all hours of the day, people depend on the L for work, for school, for fun. Ridership has more than tripled since 1990. In fact, the L Line alone is the 10th largest subway in North America, only slightly behind the entire BART system in San Francisco. 25 years ago, nobody could have predicted such growth, or the kind of growth we've seen on this line. It's fantastic for New York City, but it makes our job of repairing the Canarsie Tunnel, which was heavily damaged during Superstorm Sandy, even more difficult. But repairing the tunnel and keeping our riders safe has to be done. If we don't have a strategy for a planned closure, we risk unplanned closures and uncertainty for our riders. Those are risks we can't afford. Superstorm Sandy flooded nine of the system's 14 under-river tunnels with salt water, which is extremely corrosive. There are three tunnels where the work has already been completed, Montague, Greenpoint, and Steinway. We have three tunnels where the work is underway, 53rd, Cranberry, and Girolamin. Work still needs to be done to the Clark and Rutgers tunnels, but rebuilding Canarsie is the most crucial. Canarsie was hit especially hard, with seven million gallons of salt water flooding in from the East River. The damage was catastrophic. In the entire history of the subway, only the damage we suffered on 9-11 on the one line was greater than what we're currently facing with Canarsie. The Canarsie Tunnel is 92 years old and consists of two tubes made of cast iron and lined with concrete. Each tube carries one track. During peak times, 40 trains an hour go through the tunnel. On an average weekday, 225,000 riders travel through these tubes. Sandy flooded both tubes, damaging every part of the tunnel. The most devastating damage occurred in something we call a duct bank. These are concrete structures that provide a protected pathway for the miles of cables and circuits necessary for communications, power, and safety of the trains. The salt water from the East River flooded these duct banks. The silt dried out inside the structure, hardening like cement and destabilizing the duct bank from within. So we can't pull out the cables to replace them, and we can't hang new cables on the duct bank because it's literally falling into the tracks. We've done some interim repairs, but those are only a temporary fix, and we can't just keep patching. We have to rip out and rebuild all 37,000 feet of duct bank. There's simply no other option. While the Canarsie Tunnel is still safe for passengers, what we're trying to avoid is unplanned shutdowns due to further deterioration. Or worse, an emergency situation that puts our customers at risk. That's why we need to get started on preparing for the repairs as soon as possible, even though long-term 24-7 closures won't happen until 2019. Each tunnel damaged by Superstorm Sandy has unique circumstances that require different approaches to making repairs. At Cranberry, we were able to do the work on nights and weekends. At Montague, we had to close the entire tunnel. For Canarsie, the work is just too much for a nights and weekends closure. In particular, the demolition and replacement of the duct bank and other concrete structures will generate what's known as silica dust. To keep workers and passengers safe, we have to take special precautions and procedures when dealing with silica dust. This takes a lot of extra time. So even if we did shut down the tunnel for the weekend, we couldn't bring back normal service until the following Tuesday or Wednesday because of the time we'd need for the cleanup and silica testing. That leaves us with two options for getting the work done. A full two-track closure that lasts one and a half years, a single track closure that lasts three years. A two track closure for one and a half years is the fastest and most efficient way to complete the work. Under this scenario, L trains will operate in Brooklyn, but not in Manhattan. There would be near normal service between Bedford Avenue and Rockaway Parkway, 
but no service between 8th and Bedford Avenues. The other option is a single track closure that lasts three years. Trains would operate in two sections, between 8th Avenue and Bedford Avenue, and between Lorimer Street and Rockaway Parkway. There would be no rail service between Bedford Avenue and Lorimer Street. There would be near normal service between Lorimer Street and Rockaway Parkway, and trains every 12 to 15 minutes between 8th and Bedford Avenues. This option preserves the connection between Bedford Avenue and Manhattan, but service through the tunnel won't be frequent or reliable. Only one in five passengers who want to use that connection will be able to because of the extreme crowding and long waits that we anticipate will occur. Single track service is inherently fragile because we can't reroute trains when problems occur. So unplanned shutdowns could still happen under this scenario. With both scenarios, subway service between Rockaway Parkway and Lorimer Street would be near normal with trains in both directions operating every eight minutes. And we're looking to beef up other travel options for customers to compensate for the service disruptions. These options could include extra trains on the G, J, and M lines, enhanced bus service on 14th Street, increased B39 bus service over the Williamsburg Bridge, additional ferry service, bike sharing and ride sharing. Because any long-term 24-7 closure won't come before 2019, we've got time to get these options right. But before 2019, there will be some full shutdowns on nights and weekends to prepare for this work, regardless of which construction scenario is chosen. In addition to repairing the Canarsie Tunnel, we'll make significant upgrades to enable more trains per hour on the L line. We'll also improve First Avenue and Bedford Avenue stations to increase safety and convenience for our customers there. First Avenue will get a new entrance at Avenue A and new elevators and stairs. Bedford Avenue will get new elevators and stairs that will greatly ease congestion at this station. But before any of this work can happen, we need to fix the M line first. The M will be an important backup to the L, so we need to make sure it's in good shape. We'll be replacing two deteriorating century-old structures. When it's done, M-Line customers will have a more reliable ride, and L-Train customers will have a good alternative during the Canarsie Tunnel work. From one end of the L to the other, we see the story of New York's incredible renaissance. When you ride the Canarsie Line, you see the diversity of people, businesses, and activity that make New York one of the best places to be. We know how important the L is to these communities, and we take our responsibility to our customers very seriously. And after we rebuild the Canarsie Tunnel, we'll have an L line that will be better than ever. We'll have more trains per hour and improvements at some of our busiest stations. Most importantly, we'll have a tunnel that will be safe and reliable for decades to come.